Okay, we now understand what copyright protection gives us. We recognize its importance, but how on earth do we make our work copyright in the first place? You won't believe how easy it is. Let me show you. Suppose I've created something that needs protection. A novel called uh, 57 Shades of Murky Grey. I've just written the very last sentence and they all lived happily ever after. The end. I reach for the save button. I press it and guess what? 57 Shades of Murky Grey is now copyright protected. Done it! The moment I saved my work, remember the term, fixed in any tangible medium of expression, it automatically became copyright. That tangible means was the saved word document. If it was a design, it could even have been on the back of a table napkin or a notepad. Ridiculous, isn't it? It doesn't have to be registered with anyone. It doesn't have to have a copyright symbol although they do have a, a very real purpose. Now, I, you're going to get frustrated in a moment when I give you some bad news, but stay with me because good news does follow on. Remember how in the first video I said there are no copyright cops. There is no authority that sorts out copyright disputes. All the copyright means is that if anyone uses your original creative work without your permission, you can pursue them through the courts. Oh dear, yeah, if like me, you're a one-man band, yeah, that, that sounds like a real downer. Going through the legal process could cost a fortune. In practice though, it almost never does get to a fight out in court uh, and later I'll share my own experience uh, as a case study. Provided you go through the hoops in the first place, the threat of legal action is more than enough. So other than committing our work to a tangible means of expression, what else do we need? What, what are the hoops that we need to go through? First of all, we need a flag, a flag to put on our work that warns people in advance that we do hold copyright and that we will pursue anyone should they abuse it. Secondly, we need some irrefutable proof that we did commit our work to this fixed tangible means of expression on a particular date. The flag that we use is the copyright symbol. It's nothing more than that, a flag. But you will learn in the case study how very effective it can be in practice. Always display it on or alongside your work. If it's a website, for example, at the bottom of each page of the site. First of all, you put the word copyright, followed by the symbol. Then your name as the copyright holder, followed by the date on which you copyrighted it, saved it, wrote it down, filmed it, or whatever. Like this. But how on earth do you create the copyright symbol anyway if it's not even on your keyboard? Again, dead easy. On a PC, all you do is hold down the Alt key while typing in the number 0169, and that's it. But you must use the numeric pad not the numbers running along the top of the keyboard. If you're one of those perverts that uses a Mac, all you have to do uh, is to enter Option plus G. Oh, and if your masterpiece is an audio recording, then there's a special flag for you. It's known as a phonogram, and it's the letter P inside a circle. On a PC, simply type the digits 2117, Hold down the Alt key and press the X key. I, I promise you, honestly, it really does work uh, with most typefaces. If, on the other hand, you're a Mac user, it's much more complicated, but you will find the instructions in the notes to this session. Enough. <laughs> in our next video session, we're going to look at the second requirement, creating irrefutable evidence that we copyrighted our work on a certain date. <laughs> See you then.